For great podcasts, visit HartmanMedia.com. Welcome to the Creating Wealth Show with Jason Hartman. You're about to learn a new slant on investing, some exciting techniques, and fresh new approaches to the world's most historically proven asset class that will enable you to create more wealth and freedom than you ever thought possible. Jason is a genuine, self-made multimillionaire who's actually been there and done it. He's a successful investor, lender, developer, and entrepreneur who's owned properties in 11 states, had hundreds of of tenants and been involved in thousands of real estate transactions. This program will help you follow in Jason's footsteps on the road to your financial independence day. You really can do it. And now, here's your host, Jason Hartman, with the complete solution for real estate investors. Welcome to the Creating Wealth Show. This is your host, Jason Hartman, with episode number 667, 667. You might also call me MacGyver. Yes, I have been known to put things together with duct tape and bubble gum. That's pretty much how they maintain their 1950s cars in Cuba. Yes, also, uh, that, that's what happens over there because that country has been out of the civilized world for so long, right? So that's what I'm doing today. I hope this sounds good. I wanted so badly to use my new microphone and the software wouldn't work quite quite right. So I'm, I'm doing a workaround and I hope it sounds okay. I don't know. We'll see. We'll see. So here it is. Hey, our guest today, guess what? We've got a celebrity guest today. Well, sort of. I guess I might be stretching the truth just a little bit here. Yes, I'm I'm not a very good liar, which I guess is good for one's reputation, but it may not be good for uh, for everything because I don't know. I've been disappointed in life a lot of times as you probably have seeing how liars get ahead. So here is my stretching of the truth. Our guest today will be the famous singer Leanne Rhymes, <laughs> sort of. So last night, I was lucky enough to attend a uh, little pre-concert get-together with Leanne Rhymes. She took some Q&A. There were, uh, I don't know, about a dozen, maybe 15 of us in the room as she met with us for about a half hour before her Christmas concert. And given that it is the holidays, I thought I would uh, share this with you. Also, uh, just allow you to hear her sing a cappella from six feet away from me. She sang Amazing Grace. I, I, mean, I thought it was pretty amazing. Oh, uh, it's an amazing time to be alive. It's Amazing Grace. It's amazing to have Leanne Rhyme six feet from you. Well, I am got my iPhone out videotaping her uh, singing Amazing Grace. And it is just incredible the kind of talent some people have. I mean, you know, Leanne Rhymes, for example, in that little package, right? <laughs> She's got this huge voice. It's incredible. But I'll tell you, folks, as far as female vocalists go, I believe, and I know some of you listening may not even know who this is, I believe that the greatest female vocalist of all time, nerd alert, nerd alert, is Karen Carpenter. Yes, the late Karen Carpenter. Wow. And you know why? Because we will actually get to some real estate stuff here in a moment, by the way. And you know why she's so incredible? Is because when you listen to her recordings, if you listen to the original ones especially, or you see the old videotapes that aren't all remastered, which means they use a lot of auto-tune, right? Which all, it was the way all these vocalists cheat. And they all do it, okay? Uh, pretty much. <laughs> you know, Karen Carpenter sounded incredible before all of this technology was invented and their voices were processed like crazy. So anyway, I will share with you the little... Leanne Rhymes session and recording. I just thought it was kind of cool. And given that it's the holidays, you know, something a little different, just a little bonus thing for you. I had a kind of a private, unique experience and thought I'd share it with you. So that'll be coming up at the end. But let's get down to business, folks. We got some business to cover. Of course, we are moving fast and furious toward a Trump administration, our first real estate president, as you have heard me say. And I am the only one saying that. 
that, by the way, our first real estate president, Donald J. Trump, for better or worse, love him or hate him, I think you're going to love some of the things that happen to the economy and the real estate market. If he guts or repeals, as he has talked about, the idiotic Dodd-Frank law, then wow, (laughs) get ready, baby. You're going to see a lot more money flow into real estate. And what, 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 what does that mean when money flows into something? Well, of course, it means upward pressure on prices. Real estate Uh, The wonderful thing about it is that it is just naturally constrained. It's hard to create new supply. And when I talk about real estate, of course, I'm talking about improved real estate where you you put a property on it, right? And and so there's there's just this natural constraint. So if Dodd-Frank gets repealed, as Trump has talked about how he wants to get rid of Dodd-Frank, which is this idiotic... 2200 and something page bill that nobody really understands. It has all sorts of conflicting things in it. I haven't read it. I didn't get to vote on it either. And, you know, who cares? Nancy Pelosi, as she said with Obamacare, you know, we got to pass the bill to read what's in it, right? So Dodd-Frank has just been a mess. All sorts of unintended consequences. And if that goes away more than anything else as it applies to real estate, we are going to see, I believe, significant upward pressure on prices. Now, I'm saying this at a time when the Fed just increased interest rates for the uh, only the second time in, what, a decade or so. That's pretty significant, too, because, uh, wow, you know, higher rates mean upward pressure on rents, and lower rates mean upward pressure on prices. Hey, Guess what, investors? Remember, I talk about something called the three dimensions of real estate. Well, there's obviously more than three dimensions to this wonderful asset class, the most historically proven asset class in the entire world, single family home income property, income producing real estate. Yeah, either way you can win. Because you just simply adjust your strategy depending on the economic climate. Now, sometimes you have the best of both worlds. You have increasing prices and increasing rents. We've had that for the past several years. But say we get a massive supply of new money and relaxed lending requirements because of Dodd-Frank. Welcome to this week's edition of Flashback Friday, your opportunity to get some good review by listening to episodes from the past that Jason has handpicked to help you today in the present and propel you into the future. Enjoy. Going away or being, um, you know, either being repealed or being softened or gutted or, you know, just its impact being reduced, right? Then we will see a lot of new money flow into the real estate market. Uh, That's my prediction. And then we will see upward pressure on prices. And if it makes it really easy for all of those people renting from you, our dear listener and investor clients, if it makes it easier for those renters to qualify to buy properties, well, then they're likely to be not renewing their leases and trying to buy a property. Okay, so that means maybe if that happens in, in the overall marketplace, you can't increase your rents or you can't increase them very much. And we see a softening in rental prices. Well, price appreciation is going like wildfire. Hey, (laughs) look, you can win one way or the other. Sometimes you win both. The last seven, well, really the last nine years, you've won on both ways. Prices have dramatically increased and rents have been increasing very significantly. But sometimes there's a real imbalance as as there was in um, the early 2000s where we just saw you know, really stupid lending where money was just flowing like a gusher into real estate. Anyone who could fog a mirror had a pulse got a loan. That was stupid, of course, and it led to a lot of problems, the mortgage meltdown most namely, but not, don't confuse these, by the way, listeners. 
It led to the mortgage meltdown, and I did predict that. You might remember, if you've been following my work for a long time, I was predicting that like crazy. And everyone said I was nuts. Well, not everybody. I got a lot of criticism. I remember at my live events, I would have realtors just argue with me. You know, like really say that I was trying to destroy the real estate market and, you know, ruin the party. They didn't use those exact words. But, you know, I just remember hearing these these arguments and, and I knew it was coming. I knew there'd be a ton of foreclosures. But don't confuse the mortgage meltdown with the Great Recession. Don't confuse the mortgage meltdown with the Great Recession. When we look at our recent history here, those are two different things. The mortgage meltdown was a contributing factor to the Great Recession, but it was not the cause of the Great Recession. The real cause of the Great Recession was the criminals on Wall Street and the banksters, the banksters and the Wall Street crooks, and the way they were packaging loans and doing all these funky fake insurance products and, um, you know, CDOs, collateralized debt obligations. And, you know, all of these acronyms we all heard and we've talked about on the last 700 and however many episodes we have, 766 before this. Uh, yeah, so we've been talking about that stuff for a long time, so I won't bore you with it. But just understand those are two different things. Understand income property is a multidimensional asset class. You make money either way, sometimes both ways rents, appreciation, capital gains, whatever, adjusting your strategy along the way. Now, one of our dear listeners and followers, Christina, thank you, Christina, for sending this, sent me the funniest thing, and I just thought I'd share it with you, because as our country has been very politically divided, and there has been a lot of criticism of the lame stream media, otherwise known as the mainstream media, who, that has lost a ton of credibility. Thankfully, 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 those elite media snobs have definitely lost a lot of credibility with this last election. But it really, you know, our worldview, whether it be regarding the real estate market, the economy in general, our pessimism or optimism toward the future, our political beliefs, really come from two primary sources. Whatever media we consume, so if you sit around watching MSNBC all day, or CNN, or any of the the networks, ABC, CBS, NBC, you know, you're probably going to be a left-thinking liberal person, right? Okay, I mean, that's a fair statement. Pretty much all media skews to the left, right? And if you watch Fox News, that's about the only one, <laughs> you know, you're going to be a uh, more conservative person, right? You're going to be probably a Republican versus a Democrat, right? Well, this thing I just thought was pretty darn funny. And, uh, you know, with all of this in light of all this stuff that went on pre-election, post-election, the mainstream media, etc. Uh, Christina just, this was really funny. So it's, it's entitled Newspaper Readership, and it says, and it, and it compares several different publications, okay? And, and who reads them and what they're all about, okay? So number one, the Wall Street Journal is read by the people who run the country. <laughs> the Washington Post is read by the people who think they run the country. The New York Times is read by the people who think they should run the country and who are very good at crossword puzzles. USA Today is read by people who think they ought to run the country, but don't really understand the New York Times. <laughs> <laughs> the Los Angeles Times is read by people who wouldn't mind running the country if they could find the time and if they didn't have to leave Southern California to do it. The Boston Globe is read by people whose parents used to run the country. The New York Daily News is read by people who aren't too sure who's running the country and don't really care as long as they can get a seat on the train. <laughs> The New York Post is read by people who don't care who is running the country as long as they do something really scandalous, preferably well intoxicated. 
<laughs> the Chicago Tribune is read by people who are in prison that used to run the state and would like to do so again, as would their constituents that are currently free on bail. <laughs> the Miami Herald is read by people who are run running another country <laughs> but need the baseball scores. The San Francisco Chronicle is read by people who aren't sure if there's a country or that anyone is running it, but if so, they oppose all that they stand for. There are occasional exceptions if leaders are gay, handicapped, minority, feminist, atheist, and those who also happen to be illegal aliens from any other country or galaxy, provided, of course, they are not Republicans. <laughs> <laughs> the San Francisco Chronicle. Now that's just, oh my gosh, this is just ridiculous, right? What a ridiculous world we live in, isn't it? The National Enquirer is read by people trapped in line at the grocery store. The Seattle Times is read by people who have recently caught a fish and need something to wrap it in. <laughs> there you go. Okay, yes, uh, please don't send me any hate mail on that one. I did not write it. I just... I just got a laugh out of it, and I thought I'd share it with you. Okay, so good news. Well, the wide-ranging implications that I've talked about relating to what? Relating to longevity. How long we are going to live and how long we're already living. It's an amazing time to be alive. Well, an article just the other day by Michael Hawthorne of Newser said, Scientists take a huge step toward reversing aging. Our study shows that aging may not have to proceed in one single direction. Wow. What was that movie? Oh, gosh. You know, now I can't think of it. But you know the movie where, oh, was it Benjamin? Oh, I can't remember the name of that movie. Where, what happened? He got younger instead of older. You know what I'm talking about. Anyway, I can't think of it. It's Sunday, folks. Give me a break, okay? Okay, so in the future, the, let me share with you the article. In the future, we may be able to treat aging itself. By the way, my comment here. Aging is a disease, and it should be treated as such. It is a disease. In fact, people talk about the three most common killers, right? heart disease, cancer, and stroke, right? Did I get those right? Well, those are not the three most common killers. You know what is the biggest killer of all people? Aging. Yeah, aging. Just think about aging as a disease instead of as uh, something we just all have to accept. And maybe we don't all have to accept that forever, right? We may be able to treat aging itself rather than just the diseases that come with it, the Guardian reports. Our study shows that aging may not have to proceed in one single direction. Researcher Juan Carlos is I can't pronounce that. Belmonte says, that's quite a name, Juan Carlos is Puya Belmonte. How do you get four names by that? How do you get four names? I only have two. Yeah, anyway. Okay, with careful modulation, aging might be reversed. According to the New York Times, hey, didn't we just talk about them? The study published Thursday in Cell, I guess that's the name of the publication, is science's first attempt at combating aging by rejiggering, there's a scientific word for you, rejiggering the genome. In this study, researchers genetically engineered mice to produce four proteins that revert cells back to their embryonic state. The San Diego Tribune reports, boy, there's a lot of publications involved in this, aren't there? We got Cell, New York Times, San Diego Tribune, The Guardian, man. Okay. Uh, blah, blah, blah. They then created an on-off switch for the proteins to keep cells from permanently reverting to their embryonic state and becoming useless. After six weeks of treatment, mice genetically engineered to have the rapid aging disease, progeria, lived 30% longer. Wow. 
By the way, that wow wasn't in the article. That was just uh, your host. Mice without progeria had better functioning hearts, pancreases, and muscles, as well as improved healing of wounds following treatment. Basically, they had seemed younger. The study's results were described by outside experts as exciting, in quotes, and huge, in quotes. Well, similar treatments for humans are likely are likely at least a decade away, researchers believe they could, they could be used to slow down the body's internal clock and control at least some aspects of aging. They won't, however, lead to immortality, says is. How do you say his name, my God? Mr. Belmonte. Okay, Juan Carlos. Yeah, that is amazing. So look, folks, the biggest problem we are likely to have is too much life left at the end of the money. So invest wisely, stock up on good quality income properties, and wait and wait and wait. Because that's the thing that always works out for real estate investors Put time on your side. Now, one other part about, one other little comment about Trump, okay? So the Trump administration is likely to be a liberally spending administration. Already, Trump is, of course, talking about this trillion dollar infrastructure program. You know, Trump, I believe he's pretty Keynesian in his thinking, it's refreshing to see a business person and, and the way they're tackling running the country in terms of getting on the phone and calling companies and trying to get them to stick around. And, you know, philosophically, his trade policies and so forth, I get it that they are um, questionable. But regardless, remember, my philosophy is don't sit there complaining about the way everything is. Don't be complaining about the way the world is or how it should be better. Align your interest with the powers that be, with the Federal Reserve, with the government. And we're likely to see increased debt levels. I mean, if you lower taxes and increase spending, initially that really increases debt and deficit problems, right? But ultimately, if the uh, supply-siders are right, and I believe they are, by the way, the sort of the Reaganomics concept, Arthur Laffer, the Laffer curve. We got to get Arthur Laffer on the show. You know, I remember I met him many years ago. He's a funny guy, by the way. If you want background on him, just Google, well, don't Google it, Bing it, because Google is an evil company that controls way too much of the internet and should be busted up under antitrust law, like AT&T was. AT&T sucks, by the way. See a prior episode for comments on AT&T. Yeah, you can Bing it, okay? Just go Bing and type in the Laffer curve. If you don't know about Arthur Laffer and his work back in uh, the Reagan era, it's pretty interesting. And so ultimately, I think more economic activity will be created and tax revenues probably will go up. We'll see how Trump manages that. I think he's coming from that perspective, but he's definitely not afraid to spend. So initially, there is an investment cost, right, in that additional spending. That gets to be the scary part. So we will see what happens. But overall, I think Trump is inflationary. And that means it's an amazing time to be a real estate investor, of course. We've got a lot to talk about as far as this goes, but let's get to our, well, our pseudo guest today, Leanne Rhymes. <laughs> so what I'll, I'll do is I'll just have you listen to, this is, I think, like a 10-minute clip or so, and it's just uh, her answering a few questions right in front of us and then singing Amazing Grace. And since I took this with my own video camera, my own iPhone, I, I'm pretty sure I have the right to publish it. So here comes Leanne Rhymes. Who is your favorite artist, artist to sing with? Oh, wow. That's really difficult. <laughs> Uh-oh. Okay, country. No, I have to go through, like, everybody that I performed with. That's a female I don't even know how somebody refreshed my memory. All I can think is Elton John at the moment. Brian, Brian. That's good. Yeah. It's, um, he's I mean, pretty good. Say, uh, <laughs> Yeah, it was fun. Oh, <laughs> 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 no, no, it was. No, I'm 
<laughs> no, I, I mean, like, I love Elton. Like, I just saw, the reason he pops in my head, we just did, um... Steven Tyler. Well, that too. <laughs> He's a fan. Written in the stars. <laughs> huh? Written in the stars. No, I, yeah, but I just did, um, oh my god, hello. What's the park over in London? Thank you. Hi, Hi. Hi. thank Hi. you. High Park. Hi park. <laughs> park. I did High Park um, with him not long ago, and I saw him for the first time in several years, and he's just so sweet, so I love him. Who else? I know you got questions. Don't be shy. This man. What was your inspiration for doing the um, daily chalkboard quotes? Um, I needed um, some inspiration in my life, to be honest. Like, I um, I love quotes. I love the written word, and I wanted to put a chalkboard up in our kitchen so that the kids could see like some inspiration every day. And I'm me, and so when I uh, my husband gave me a chalkboard um, for Valentine's Day last year, and I just so happened to um, to take a picture of it and put it on Instagram. I just started basically started my Instagram with that with that, and people like really gravitated towards it and. I just kept going. It's wonderful. Oh, thanks. every day, like I'm yeah. like, I, that's why I'm going to Instagram. Thank you. Like, why? Are you, like, why? I'm just so annoyed people do that. So that's cool. That's no, I, well, it's just a different connection with people. Like, it's Absolutely. really human. And I mean, I get that through my music, you know. Um, mm -hmm. But it's just another way, another avenue to be able to do that. And I love, you know, I love writing my own. I love finding. I just, I love. I find inspiration from all of that, you know, from everybody, from seeing different points of view of, of people writing, and so um, I love honoring that because it's, you know, creativity is beautiful. Yeah. Awesome. Yes. Hi. <laughs> um, super huge fan. Thank you for stealing my heart like 19 years ago. Aww. Actually, the Disney Channel when you had to call in. Oh yeah, right. <laughs> that was me. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I remember what I was wearing. Yes. Yeah. I remember it. Yes, uh, that gold, was it the gold suit the gold thing? Suit. Yeah, that was fantastic. Okay. <laughs> I know, it was. It was so that we era. So <laughs> that. Um, but we are expecting our first child oh. together. We're six, we're six months pregnant. So oh the first question I have is, what's your opinion on the name Voss? Voss? Yes. It's beautiful. See? Oh, that's even cooler. Okay. And, and the like, second No, it's cool. I like the name. Um, what is the best advice? Because he is going to be a bonus dad. Oh, yes. So, what's the best advice that you could give him? Hold on. So, do you have other children? I have one. Yeah. How old is she? She's nine. Oh, nine. Ah, okay. And how long have you been in his life? Um, a little over a year. Oh, wow. Okay. So, he's a little older. How's he handling it? He loves it. That's awesome. <laughs> See, that's all you can ask for. Honestly. My stepdad can tell you all about it, too. We <laughs> I've known him since I was seven, but no. Um, the best advice, oh God, there's the best advice I can give is every situation is different. Don't ever compare your situation to someone else's, and don't ever let anyone tell you what you should do in your situation, because it is so different for everybody. So I just, you know, love them, love them with all your heart, and just be there for them. And you know, it's it's that fine line of walking between like parent and friend, and like where you're supposed to be. But I think you just you just intuitively know, and the kids kind of tell you where where all of those lines are and hopefully they end up just not being there, you know. All of a sudden I feel like a therapist. <laughs> like I didn't know. Yeah, no, one, no one's really ever asked me about it. So Yeah. Okay, good. Okay, good. Thank you. I charge for that. Who else? Somebody else has a question. Here we go. Like Kiki. <laughs> okay, never mind. Uh, <laughs> about, yes, ma'am. A dream adventure. A dream adventure. I want to go to a safari so badly. It's awesome. Um, yeah. Have you been? Yeah. Oh, South dying Africa. To go. So in the next couple of years, that's like my, my next thing. I love traveling. I love traveling, but I don't get to see a lot of places very much because I'm always working most of the time when we travel. Yeah. So believe it or not, like when I'm when I'm off work, I like to be at home, but I also I like to travel when I'm not traveling because I'm not traveling to work. <laughs> what is going on over there? <laughs> what? You guys are laughing. What she said, your lives look amazing. Oh, thank you. <laughs> 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 thank you. Yeah, yeah. Yes, that's my Because she gets days off. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, she needs some days. We all need some days off. We're a little delirious at the moment. <laughs> yes, ma'am. What is your favorite place to travel to that um, you've been? 
God, there's plenty of places, actually. Um, well, when we're on tour, one of my favorite places to stop in is Dublin. Like, I love mm-hmm. Ireland. Irish people are so awesome. Mm-hmm. Um, where else do I love to go? I mean, we've traveled. I love to go to Cabo just because it's easy and fun. And yep. we, um, Tahiti was amazing. <laughs> What else have I gone? Where would you never want to go back to? <laughs> I don't know. Like, I don't want to go back to. Uh, I don't think there's been a place like Seamus. Seamus like there's a place. In the- <laughs> <laughs> Do we put those out of our head though? Well, we want to be invited back. So <laughs> yeah, that's it. yeah, no, no, exactly. Are you going to share some of those home videos? Huh? Are you going to share yeah. some of those home videos? Oh, I'm sure. Yes, I'm sure there's some of them. No, we're very forward thinking people. We don't think about those bad things. Yes. Coming from her, I'm just curious, how are you enjoying your new relationship with RCA? And it's been RCA? good. Yeah. It's been really good. Um, about differences or you know, like more freedom or like what what are you thinking? It's um yeah, no, it, there's a tons of differences. Um but they that they, they let me make the record I wanted to make with this uh-huh. and which was really nice. I mean I they believed in my talent and didn't really put very many restraints on the record, so um, I got to really be free on this album, and it was great. Yeah, Wonderful. it's been really good. They've, they've been everybody there. The label's been great, and awesome. Hannah over there is in your reception. Really in the UK is, is <laughs> in your reception in the UK. Is, is oh, it's been amazing. Yeah, yeah it's always awesome. been that way though. They, yeah, everybody's been fantastic. They love music there, which is great. Yeah. And the album in the States, that's February 3rd? Yeah, the album is out right. February 3rd. Cool. We have a single out right now. Well, it's, since it's the holidays, it really won't be going to radio until the beginning of January. So, um, But we were, um, I'm so excited, we should, do you know this? We were number one most added on the dance chart this week, which is awesome. Cool. Wow. Yeah. <laughs> that's cool. For what track? For uh, Long Live Love. It was a, the dance mix of the song, so that was awesome. Nice. Yeah. Thank you. What? Would you like to sing us a song now? No. You don't want me to sing it. Wow. She's Wait, honest. Now I will. Now I will. <laughs> Wait, on my what? terms. I know, exactly. Wait, no, now. That's good. Now good. <laughs> good. Um, okay. I may sing as sweet a sound that say of like me.
sounds awesome. <laughs> <laughs> wow. You kill me. Thanks, guys. Man, you Thank you. Thank you. Appreciate it. Awesome. Super cool for a girl or boy. Oh, you. I like that. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks, Liam. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Merry Christmas. Merry Christmas. Thank you so much for listening. Please be sure to subscribe so that you don't miss any episodes. Be sure to check out the show's specific website and our general website, hartmanmedia.com, for appropriate disclaimers and terms of service. Remember that guest opinions are their own. And if you require specific legal or tax advice or advice in any other specialized area, please consult an appropriate professional. And we also very much appreciate you reviewing the show. Please go to iTunes or Stitcher Radio or whatever platform you're using and write a review for the show. We would very much appreciate that. And be sure to make it official and subscribe so you do not miss any episodes. We look forward to seeing you on the next episode.